Right. Guys, welcome back. Jerk Block Talk. I'm Jason Fernandez. This is where a lot of the not sexy stuff happens in the world of coaching. Uh, I'm in my office here at the gym. Um, it is 6.30, so we're kind of wrapping up the day here, getting ready for the weekend, um, closing out the week. And so I was just getting some of the stuff done that I usually get done during the week. and. I thought it would be a, a pretty good opportunity to talk about some of the things um, that I do on a weekly basis that are not necessarily on the floor. Uh, I think you'll find that some of the, um, uh, I don't, I don't want to make the assumption that I'm like a great gym owner, but um, I've taken a lot of notes from people who I consider to be very, very good. Uh, so we're going to talk about in, and, and we're going to, we're going to tag along a little bit on along the lines of what we, the previous video that we talked about with regard to giving your coaches feedback. And in order to really, really be able to dial in your feedback, uh, the first thing you have to do prior to that is set the expectation. And I think I see, uh, I get a lot of questions about how to handle different scenarios. By the way, uh, it's five o'clock somewhere, so if you haven't tried uh, War Flag, it's an American Pilsner, you really should do that. Cheers to you guys um, for watching the show. But communication, so I get a lot of questions about people talking about hey, how do I handle X scenario or what do I do with this coach? And the bottom line is that what it really boils down to, um, Jocko Willink talked about this extensively in the book, uh, Extreme Ownership. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Uh, for me, it was a really cool book because it kind of affirmed a lot of things that I already believed in, but it just really, really doubled down on those. Um, your, your coaching staff's lack of ability to do what you want them to do is in large part, if not solely, because of your lack of communication. Your lack of communication. All of the things that have gone wrong with our coaching staff in this gym are solely a result of me, Jason Fernandez, not clearly communicating what the expectation was, whether it was how we execute opening the gym, how we do communications for um, whatever, um, and, and more importantly, how I expect them to act on the floor as a professional. So one of the things I do every week, uh, I, send out, uh, I send out two emails. One of them is on the business side, it's to all of the gym members, uh, the gym members talking about things that are going on that week, cool. Uh, more importantly, I send a second email to all of the staff talking about a lot of the same topics, but more importantly, things that we're focused on for the week and what my expectation is for those topics during the week. So for instance, uh, I, a couple weeks ago, I sent out an email that was talking about like, hey, been watching some classes, the queuing has been getting a little sloppy, let's focus there. Here's some things to think about when doing so. Uh, if this is a good opportunity for you to really, really get into a rhythm to start hammering some of the things that you really want to implement within your gym. So it's not one of these things where you send out one fucking email and then all of a sudden everybody abides. Like, that's not how it works. If you're not constantly dripping your culture and your message onto the staff, it's not gonna stick. And one of the things, and so this wall is a perfect example. We just did this wall recently. Uh, it's got the core values and the, uh, our vision and mission on it. Um, and the important part about that is the expectation is clear now about what our culture is defined by. It's defined by all of those things. Um, so it's not subjective anymore. And when you're giving feedback, that doesn't, it, that is clearly subjective, but it needs to be subjective based on clearly defined expectations about what it is that you want. So you can't just take a shit on somebody 
because they did poorly, but you didn't tell them what you wanted. Like that's a crappy head coach. That's a crappy mentor. Um, so we do, I, I really, really try to go out of my way to make sure that, that they understand what the expectation is, that they understand what needs to happen. Um, and when you really, really do own the fact that if your coaching staff sucks in large part, it's because you suck. That's when you'll start making the changes. That's when you'll start implementing good lines of communication. That's when you'll start doing all those things. It's going to make your staff improve. Uh, our staff here, I think has made huge strides this year, just based on my, um, coming back to and refocusing on communicating with them on a very, very regular basis. And that's in person and via other mediums like email, text, all that stuff, constantly communicating so that there's, there's no uh, misunderstanding about what's coming up, what needs to happen, and about what the expectations are and what we're gonna measure success at. Um, and again, you can do that with their coaching on the floor. So since this show is primed towards building good coaches, a lot of the stuff that you need to put in those regular communications should be about coaching. Like, I mean, if you can't get off your ass and send in an email once a week to your coaching staff with some coaching content, whether it be nutrition or cueing or some, you know, biomechanics so that you can educate your cat, your, your, your coaching staff so that they can speak authoritatively when somebody asks them a question, well, then you're lazy. That's your fault. It's like, so if your coaching staff sucks, well, maybe you should look in the mirror and say, Hey, like maybe I'm not doing my job. So flip it on yourself. And it's kind of a harsh thing, right? So the reason I really got into this is I got some feedback from the staff it says, Hey dude, like you're not communicating well enough. So I was like, well, shit, I'm sorry. Let me communicate a little bit better. So I started doing that and uh, I've gotten a, a lot of good return feedback from the staff when I started communicating them on uh, a much, much better on what it is that I wanted. Because a lot of times as you as the head coach, you know what you want. So it's okay for it to just exist in your mind and nobody else, you know, has any idea what's going on when that's not okay. If you want people to buy into the culture, number one, define it, set the expectation. But number two, you have to continually, continuously engage with them based on that. Um, and, and coaching specific, like if you, if you feel that your coaches are not doing a good job or you feel that there's some, you know, or one of the one or multiple of those six criteria that make a good coach, maybe that should be your focus for 30 days or two months or something like that. Find as much content as you want, or as you can, as you could possibly get your hands on, go to the CrossFit journal, endless amounts of content there, find all that stuff and drip it on your coaches two, three times a week and then have conversations with them about it. You know, we'll talk more about like having staff meetings and reinforcing that stuff in a later video and we'll probably videotape one of the staff meetings, but you know, that's your responsibility as a coach. You know, there are, there are those people that are self-motivated out there, um, but even they need guidance. They need to, you need to rein that in a little bit and, and kind of, you know, those are the ones that, that don't need to be led. They just need to be pointed in a certain direction. And that's your job to figure out who are my hard chargers? Are they pointed in the right direction? And then who are my folks that need guidance on what it is that they should be studying, where their weaknesses are, where their strengths are, and how they should focus their efforts. So that's on you as a coach to make that assessment on yourself and then on your staff and then figure out a plan of action. And I would tell you, make it super simple. Like, again, an email once a week that's got like five or six bullets on it saying, hey, this is the focus for the week. This is what I saw last week. These are the things coming up this week. These are our opportunities to make some change and really, really drive that focus home. Um, and I think you'll get a lot of good value out of that. Uh, more importantly, when you do that to the coaching staff, they're going to be thankful that you took the effort to communicate with them more frequently so that they understand where your head's at. But what's gonna to happen to the value that they provide to the people that walk in the door because now they're focused and they're not just coming in and punching the clock and just kind of aimlessly doing whatever, um, that, that value is going to skyrocket. Uh, and expect some feedback on that. So some of the stuff you're gonna put out there is gonna be worthless, it's gonna be stupid, and it, it's kind of a feeling out process to kind of figure out how that should work. But the point is that you should be communicating with your staff on a regular basis and not just in the form of giving them feedback on their classes. You should be regularly hitting them with emails, texts, 
having meetings, having individual sit downs with them. That's part of your job as a head coach, as an owner, in order to develop your staff. Okay, so there's, there's two pieces. There's being, there's training clients and then there's training trainers. One of the things that we'll talk about in a lot of episodes going forward is training trainers and there's a lot more that goes into that than just the ability to see and correct movement. Um, so um, that's all I got for you today. Um, if you guys have recommendations or ideas about how you regularly communicate with your staff and how it's worked for you, put them in the comments. Again, this whole thing is to start really, really good dialogue so that other people can get good ideas to improve their product, to improve their coaching and their staff. So don't keep those good ideas. Put them out there. The better we get as a community, the less and less we'll hear all this dumb shit about CrossFit coaches are bad, and that's what everybody hates to hear. So this is part of the solution in solving that problem and attacking it head on is sharing that information, and that's kind of the point of this project. Uh, you know, Jerk Block Talk is about talking about coaching and really, really honing in on coaching. So um, communication, guys, is the key for today. You gotta communicate with your staff regularly. You have to set clear expectations. How you choose to do that is completely up to you, but the point is it's gotta get done. So figure it out. If you have comments, please put them in there. And I don't just say that uh, because you know, I'm blowing smoke up your ass. Like, I really want you guys to put comments about what you think, how we can improve this, and where we should go moving forward. So, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.